Welcome back to Q13 News this morning. So we have talked about mental health during the pandemic. Obviously, a lot of issues here around this, but uh, there's something that it's a, kind of hard to talk about because it's hard to define. Like you're feeling burnt out, but you're not depressed. You're, you're not thriving. You're just kind of blah, which is what we actually saw here in the New York Times, this story. I saw it last week and I was like, I, I, this is me, this is me. Um, they're, they're calling this feeling languishing. And once I read this, I was like, we've got to talk more about this because it was exactly what I felt. And I bet you might be feeling this as well. So what is languishing? We're going to turn to our own friend and therapist, Joshua Magianis, uh, really an expert on mental health. You join us on the show pretty regularly. Such great advice. First, just tell us, what is languishing? Uh, well, it's everything you mentioned, and it's that blah. I mean, I think the article coins it, they pin it very well, and especially when they talk about the Simpsons and somebody saying meh, right? It's that in-between space. It's we're between stagnation and feeling empty, and as we're not being as progressive or, or <laughs> as productive as we would like to be normally. And so it's that lull. It's when we find ourselves, I would say, feeling a little burnt out, feeling like, geez, I'm... I'm running through muddy waters and I'm not moving a whole lot. How do I tell the difference between languishing and being depressed? Right, that's a great question because it's very hard to determine where you're at, right? And, and in fact, as we're languishing, I would have to say that even though it's sort of like the middle of the road as the, the, uh, uh, the individual who wrote the article talks about, it, it, it is a major part of mental health because if we're not able to be as productive as we'd like to be normally, what's going to happen is that cycle has been going to come into play and then we probably will feel depressed. And in fact, this past year, as we've been in this pandemic and we've had to be in isolation and quarantine, many of us have moved away from our normal way of being, so our normal routines. And when we don't have those, we feel stuck, we feel out of place and out of touch with ourselves. And so when we're feeling out of touch with ourselves and we're not able to find any satisfaction in things, that's usually when we're depressing. But this languishing thing, this, this newer term, right, is really us feeling like, you know, I'm still sort of getting things done, but I'm just feeling like it just doesn't feel like I'm getting enough done or I'm not feeling as satisfied as, with what's happening. So what do I do about it? Because right. I definitely uh, am feeling this. <laughs> <laughs> Many of us are, right? I mean, the past year was about grieving and loss, loss of where we were in 2019 and then February, March. And so what I think is key, right, is to acknowledge what are our small wins? What are the small tangible wins that we can hold on to, that we can grab onto? The article talks about staying in flow, which I love. And I often talk with my clients about the fluidity and staying in flow, which is really just accepting where you're at bringing in some good energy and essence into that space, which is where we're all at, right? This in-between liminal space that feels so weird right now, um, but bringing in whatever essence and energy that we would like now, accepting where we're at. And even if it's stretching ourselves a little bit to, I don't know, maybe go for a walk outside and maybe instead of just walking one mile, we walk two miles, that's a win and celebrating in those wins and stretching our minds a little bit to think outside the box, think about different ways in which we can challenge ourselves um, and, and we can start to navigate through this language. And, and we've got to name it, right? We've got to say how we're really feeling. You know, Travis, when you hopped on, you said, gosh, Josh, this is totally me right now. And I appreciate that. And I smell that because when we are kidding ourselves and not saying how we truly are feeling, we're really not connecting. I love that because exactly like the minute I could put a name to it, I was like, OK, I can get my arms around it. If I could just call it languishing, then I can actually move on to. All right. Now, what is flow and how do I do it? So why do you think this has been neglected in mental health for so long? We talk about depression. We talk about thriving. But languishing has been something kind of a lot of us are like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Right, right. Because we pay attention to the anxious, the anxiety, the stress, the depression, the 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 normal crew, right, that is in our backyard of, of the mental health uh, factors. And, and when we acknowledge things like this that are nuanced, that are different, right, it gives a name and we can, we can, we can put some weight into it. And also, we tend to spend more time on how depression makes us feel. So the physical sense, right, we, we're not paying attention to the emotional sense. And I think now, especially with this year and our nation, the United States, not 
being able to endure a pandemic or something similar to this, it is just very difficult for folks. And so when control is taken, right, it's like, what do we do with that? How do we deal with this uncertainty in certain times? I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, as always, Joshua. Like, we left the fight or flight of 2020, and now we here are languishing. And, uh, you know, always such great advice. Thank you for joining us. And if you'd like more information from Joshua, you can visit him on his website, joshuatherapy.com. Joshua, I hope that uh, you can get out of your languishing, if you are languishing, and I can get out of mine very soon with a little bit of flow. Uh, Me too. Thank you, Travis. All right.